Hi guys! Guess who I'm with? Hi! My, my former boss. <laughs> We're rocking in a bell. <laughs> okay, um, you know, I was telling Maria that um, my daughter had a, uh, a lesson in school about community heroes, but of course she's now a worldwide sensation. But you know, my daughter is only seven years old. And um, they're now being taught in school how to, you know, fight for freedom and how to, you know, how the truth is so important. So Maria, could you, if you were talking maybe to my seven-year-old right now or to all the students who may, who may be watching us, the young uh, Filipinos, what would you tell them? You know, I, I say this all the time, right? When you're very young, you, you, that's when you actually develop a sense of what's right and what's wrong. I'm mm -hmm. sure this is something you and Vince discuss with, with your children. And I think that's the core of maybe something we've lost, especially during a time when... You can't tell what's what's fact or fiction on social media, so it's it's the core of it, right? That that in in order to be able to get to the truth, what drives you to do that? And it it comes down to a sense of justice, but underlying all of that is a sense of right and wrong. And so you know when you're really young, draw that line. On this side, you're good, and when you cross, on this side, you're evil. Uh, it's the same line of, about corruption. We talked about this in, in ABS-CBN. We took a zero tolerance approach to corruption. You know, it, And if you do that, then you, it's very clear in your head when you're tempted, um, you know that you'll wake up differently the next, mm -hmm. the next if you cross that line. Diba? These are values that um, we've learned um, even when I was still young, the right from wrong, standing up for the truth. But sometimes it's hard. What if you're in a position when you're under a lot of pressure like you? How did you do it? Because uh, many times, I'm sure, if you were someone else, you'd give up. Uh, you don't. I mean, it's, it's funny because the more you do the right thing, the harder it is to do the wrong thing. Right? It's like a muscle memory. It's like going to the gym. The first time you take a bribe, you've taken a path. So the way to stop corruption is start at the beginning, say no. And you say no once, it's easier to keep saying no. But the minute you accept, the minute you accept a bribe, then the easier it is to be corrupt, right? And somehow societally, we have to get to the point, the tipping point when there are more people who are doing the right thing. So that it doesn't seem like, uh, like you're foolish if mm. you do the right thing. Oftentimes, that's what it feels like in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But it works. We are fools, fools for the right, for the for the truth. If, if, if that's what you call it, then you know by all means. Um, I guess okay. Last message for everyone. Um, you are the uh, Nobel Peace mm -hmm. Prize winner. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you think this means for the Philippines and for the world? It's hard. I'm actually in the middle of writing the Nobel lecture. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done the first draft and, you know, I realized I'm only the 18th woman, the first Filipina, uh, and the first and the first journalist in, in almost 80 some odd years, mm -hmm. since 1936. So it actually shows you, I think, how important journalism is today, mm -hmm. how important truth is that it is global in scope and that this is this moment when things could get better or things could get worse i would say this is a sliding door moment you know you go down this path and if we don't do anything differently globally we'll we can move into a kind of a descent to tyranny a descent to fascism and if we take the right steps if we stand up for what's right if we demand facts, truth, then, you know, we can, for the Philippines, it's existential, then we can save our democracy. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, oh, no, no, this is an off question. What do you do on your <laughs> spare time? Sir? Aside from, you know, do you have a spare time? Not that so much. Any... <laughs> so you don't watch Netflix? Oh, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> do so, you? so here's or, the funny uh, part. Um, the woman from Grey's Anatomy, Sarah oh, yeah. o. Sandra right. Oh. Sandra yes, o, she right? has that Netflix series. She had the Grey's channel. Anatomy. Well, the chick, yeah, but see, I met her before 
I watched Grey's Anatomy. Oh, so oh, it was what well, after oh. it was the pandemic where I watched it all and I was like, Oh my god. Oh my god, so, she she was a sensation. She's one of my favorite characters there. She was and her role was big for Asians. Well she not only not only that, but also it was um when was the, the the it was at the time one hundred and we had to sit down and we were being briefed because there were five of us who were doing a toast and she asked me to read her her toast and I kind of I knew she was a star. I knew she you was. You didn't an know her. I didn't know. I didn't watch Grey's Anatomy. So anyway, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. So and so you did after. I did. Did you binge watch? Yeah, throughout the it's pandemic. A, a I I gotta say there. I mean, it's very bad in terms of what it's what's happened. But I didn't realize how exhausted I was until the lockdown yeah. happened. Well, well, good luck, Maria, and all the best uh, when you uh, travel to Oslo. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nina. Nice to see you again. It's my former boss, our former big boss in India. <laughs>